Now it is time once again for recasting with Christian Slater. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to another episode of Recasting with Christian Slater. We're bad talent and bad movies, lock crotches and swap gravy. <laughs> Unfortunately, you as a listener have to be subject subjected to the bastard child it creates, slowly germinating in your ear canal, heading to your brain and insulting your intelligence. Sound fun? Well, let's get going. It's Cinorama this week, as we will be performing small scenes from two different films. As usual, I believe in introducing the movie and the readers from each film. Starting off, we'll be reading from a slasher classic, Friday the 13th, Part 4, The Final Chapter. Reading for the part of our fake computer-owning computer goof, Ted, is our favorite cartoon moose, Bullwinkle. Welcome back, Bullsy. Why, thank you, Christian. I did some research on this character, and fans believe he's actually a virgin. Christian, if I may ask, what's a virgin? Jesus. It means you were perfectly fucking cast. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. Wasn't a compliment. Pay playing the role of lovelorn Jimmy is our resident son of a bitch, Don Knotts. How you doing, Donnie? What, Lorne? Shit! <laughs> you know how much ass I used to pull back in my day? I had poon lines up in, from, in advance. I We got a lot of ground to cover another time, Donnie. Scene 7, page 18. Exterior, highway, day. A wood-paneled station wagon cruises down the highway, surrounded by trees on each side. A silly song emanates from the vehicle as it passes by. Interior, car, moving, day. Weekend warriors Doug, Samantha, Sarah, and Paul continue to sing as the car proceeds down the road. In the far back of the station wagon sits Ted and Jimmy. Ted, early 20s, is a short, overconfident with the shit-eating grin. Sunglasses are perched on his nose. Jimmy, tall and lanky, is flustered as he runs his hands through his, mo his mop-like hairdo. <clears throat> you broke up with BJ Betty? So to speak. Would you lighten up on her? She's all right. Ted scoffs and takes off his shades. Yeah, I'll say she's all right. You should have treated her right. I mean, a girl like her wanted to be treated right. I did, I did, I treated her right. I treated her right, that's what's driving me crazy. Slater, this guy's a pussy. Stick to the script, <laughs> Donnie. I mean, first I would call her and she would take my calls. But then she would have something she had to do. But then she wouldn't even take my calls. I mean, can you figure that? What the fuck happened? Let me put it in the old computer. Ted rubs his hands together and begins to fake type on the, on the top of a beer box in front of him. No, I'm serious about this. Hey, let the, the computer don't lie. Ted looks at the fake screen for a moment, puts his hand over his face, and starts to laugh. Jimmy is curious. What? It says, um, <laughs> it says you're a dead fuck. What? A dead fuck? A lousy lay, you know, a dead pecker. Oh, I say, don't hold back from me, Doc. Give it to me straight. 
I did not say it. The computer did. Ted motions to the beer box, the fake computer. <clears throat> yeah, well, there is no computer. Aha, uh -huh, and there's no Betty either. Jimmy considers this for a moment. Then I'm a dead fuck? Like I said, the computer don't lie. Flustered, Jimmy rubs his face and runs his fingers through his hair. God, I'm horny. <laughs> and scene. Our next film we're going to attempt to we're going to attempt to ruin comes from 1999, a Schwarzenegger project entitled End of Days. Donnie and Bullwinkle will be playing double duty as he will be reading as Donnie will be reading the part of Jericho Kane, since his physique is so close to Arnie's. Oh, I'm just pissing my pants over here. You're so funny. <laughs> Playing the role of Satan himself is Bullwinkle. I don't think I can do this. Just think of your own worst enemy. You mean that sawed-off commie and that skank that's trying to kill me? The fact that you just said that shows me that you're able. All right, end of days. Let's get down. Scene 14, page 75. Interior, Jericho's apartment, night. Jericho trudges through his apartment, weary and tired. He, stops, he steps towards the counter, grabs a whiskey bottle, and sips. It gets easier when you accept who you are. Jericho spins around and points his pistol at a man, presumably possessed by Satan. He calmly leans against a window sill. A fallen soul. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Jericho begins to search his apartment, gun still drawn on the man. Doors locked. No windows broken. How did I get in? Who the fuck are you? Oh, I think you know who I am. You just don't want to believe it. The man steps away and begins fishing through multiple medications on Jericho's counter. I took a, I took a bullet for you. I protected you. No, no, no. You didn't protect me. You just protected this body. I am... Am I getting a pattern here? The man begins showing Jericho the prescriptions. So much pain not to be taking with alcohol. Remember that. The man crosses the room and goes to the fireplace mantle and observes some photos. Jericho tracks him with his gun. Pardon me for a second. He's a fucking water. <clears throat> Oh, to lose a wife and a child, I can't even imagine what that must be like. The man tosses the photo to the floor. What do you want? To make you happy again. Jericho steps towards the man when suddenly the room morphs into a scene from Jericho's past. Christmas music in a tree. Jericho hears the giggle of a child and sees his young daughter playing in the bathtub. Amy? A woman crosses the hallway and asks her to get out of the tub before she turns into a prune. Emily! Mother and daughter talk about how daddy works too much. I can give it all back to you, everything he took away. The man approaches Jericho as he looks upon his wife and daughter. Everything. You can hold your wife again. You can watch your daughter walk through the door in her prom dress. All you have to do is tell me where the girl is. Come on. She's a nobody to you. You don't even know her. You think you're saving her? She wants to be with me. You told me you'd do anything to get your family back. You want them? This is your chance. They're not real. Does it matter? Oh, yes! I think you need to be reminded how painful reality is. Suddenly, armed men kick in the door. Jericho shoots at him to no avail. He charges at one, leaps right through him. The armed men 
grab Amy and Emily and drag them to the bedroom. Shotgun blasts ring out. Jericho charges through the bedroom door. The man, ca- the man casually saunters behind him. Jericho rushes. No! <laughs> Jericho looks upon the dead bodies of his wife and child, horrified. It wasn't your fault. I wasn't there. You were doing your job. I wasn't fucking there. Oh, look at you, torn apart by guilt. You didn't do anything wrong. You were on this cup. You didn't take away. You didn't take money. You had to testify against the men even after they threatened your family. And where was God? He could have stopped it. But he fucked you. Then he made you feel guilty. Me? I don't do guilt. I don't do this either. I can make it like it never happened. Oh, for the price of a stranger's address. Jericho is enraged, heaving, heaving heavy at a mirror in front of him. He punches it with all his might and it shatters. No! Jericho spins around and the room morphs back to normal. You will never see the girl! The man sighs and shakes his head, irritated. Now you see, now you're upsetting me. You don't want to see me upset. Believe me. Oh, you want to fuck with me? You think you're no bad, huh? You're a fucking choir boy compared to me. A fucking choir boy. You're in touch with your anger. I like that. I don't know about you, but I'm going to have a drink. With that said, I think we all need a drink. (laughs) Because, folks, it's not the end of days, nor is it the final chapter. Here at the recasting with Christian Slater. If it's not reason enough to drink, I don't know what is. Until next time.